Before the 5'5 wide receiver left for the NFL, he wanted to play college basketball for a season, and since he was at Alabama at the time, Nate Oates let him walk onto the team, and his journey to get playing time began. This is the untold story of Jake Newman's college basketball career, and I'll be playing all of it in this video. I was fortunately a part of a top 25 team, so I felt like we had a decent chance at a national championship. However, I was surrounded by a lot of talented guys, so that meant I'd have to wait my turn to get into the game, but with two minutes left in the half, I got my chance. I was ready to play some college basketball, and since I was so short, I really had no other option than to be a point guard, but I got my first assist here, and then, just one possession later, I decided I was going to try and create my own shot, so I got some separation, and I nailed it, but defensively, I was a little confused, and that led to them scoring a lot, which meant Nate Oates had to pull me out. Oregon came out a little hot in the second half, so I was surprised I was in the game with three minutes left, especially since I missed this layup, but at least I was starting to build chemistry with my teammates as we moved it around for a JQ three-pointer. My experience did start to show when I lost the ball with a minute left in the game, and since I was too short to make any type of play on defense, I was immediately taken out and I had to watch my teammates try to fight back, as with three seconds left, Javon Quinterly went for the win, but he missed, and over the next few games, my playing time dwindled. I did get to travel to Hawaii to play in the Maui Invitational, but we finished in sixth place, and this is obviously not the start we were expecting. We had a chance to redeem ourselves at Gonzaga and Mark Sears was definitely on one today. But so was Drew Timmy and I promise you he isn't doing this in real life. By the time I checked into the game, the kennel was about to erupt and I was getting nervous. However, I created my own shot showing that I was more than just a football player and I even forced a turnover here as I was starting to get better at defense. It would lead to a massive and one play on the other end and I had definitely impressed. I was starting to get pumped up on the bench as I love being a part of this team, and Nate Oates must have wanted to give me another opportunity, because I got back in in the second half, and I wasn't ruining this chance. I really wasn't the best at free throws yet, so maybe I should try to avoid getting fouled next time, but at least I was still showing my use by running the court and setting up my teammates for insane plays. The upset was looking inevitable, and on top of that, I forced a steal, and I shocked the entire arena as I showed off my athleticism. I know I'm a 5'5 guy dunking, but I did play college football, and even though I would be taken out after that, I knew I was one of the reasons we won today, and that led to me getting more playing time throughout the year. The month of January went really well for us, as we were one game behind undefeated Tennessee in the SEC, and I couldn't wait to play against our rivals. At this point in the season, my team had finally gotten in a groove, and I had worked my way up to being the first guy off of the bench because I could shoot. All eight minutes of high school basketball I played in were starting to show as I was playing confidently, and I felt like winning the SEC tournament and making a run during March Madness was actually a possibility. Possibility. I was still bad for a point guard at free throws, but I was at least around 65% on the year with them, and to end the first half, I drained a deep three that would put us up by double digits, so at this rate, I thought I could be a starter by the end of the season. We are going to act like I didn't get baptized midway through the second half though, because on the next possession, I did something that I didn't even think I was capable of doing. And you know what, I probably shouldn't have pulled this one from the logo, but I was feeling myself, and I played a big role in taking down Auburn. Not many people can say they've beaten their rivals in two sports. And after we went 8-3 and three in the month of February, we won the SEC regular season title, and I was hoping to win the conference tournament as well. I had an assist for the game winner in the quarterfinals against Auburn, and we beat LSU by 10 in the semifinals, so there was only one team standing in our way now, and it was the Kentucky Wildcats. They had a dominant front court, and I couldn't wait to get into the game since I still wasn't a starter. By the time Nate Oates let me play, we were up by 4, and they didn't respect my ability to shoot at all. I mean, I know I'm little, but I was asserting my dominance early on, and I was even forcing turnovers on defense. To be honest, I still don't know what the f*** this was, but we went into the half with a six point lead, and coach left me out there to start the second, so I must have been impressing him. To be fair, I was pretty much running the offense as I dished out assist after assist, so I guess it is a no-brainer why Nate Oates was letting me stay in the game. I really wanted to be a starter by the NCAA tournament, and I felt like I was showing that I could be one as I stole the ball and then went coast to coast on Kentucky. My team was going to win the SEC in both basketball and football, and this one was just the icing on the cake. 
The Wildcats were not happy, we won the championship, but I couldn't wait to celebrate all night long and even though we weren't a one seed, I was pretty happy with the region we got drawn into. Unlike Kentucky, we didn't lose to a 15 seed in the first round and our next opponent was 10 seeded West Virginia. I was praying we didn't get upset in the round of 32, but we started off trailing the Mountaineers by four and that's when I came in hoping to make a difference for my team. However, I wasn't hitting the shots that I had been in recent games and I was causing more harm than good as I continued to turn the ball over, so I got taken out almost immediately. I don't know why, but my team started to turn it around after that and I was afraid I wouldn't see the court again. There was a good chance that was going to happen since West Virginia ended the first half with a bang and point guard Mark Sears was honestly the only guy keeping us in this one. All I could do was watch from the bench as with a minute left we were trailing until this clutch deep three and West Virginia tried to respond back on the other end but it missed and Mark Sears continued to be the clutchest player on my team. It was probably a good thing I didn't play during our comeback win but I really wanted to get out there against Illinois in the Sweet 16. I was way too competitive to just watch a huge game from the bench so I was glad I got put in with three minutes left in the half but it was clear me only being five foot five was hurting us on defense a lot. I would have to make up for it on the other side of the court and I had a chance to pull off an and one here but like my height the free throw fell a bit short. I was trying my hardest to make sure we ended the half on a good note and as time was about to expire I created some space and nailed the three pointer so I was hoping that would lead to more playing time but I had to watch Illinois come back from the bench and I swear they dunked it about every possession so it was a good thing that my team was full of three point shooters that wouldn't miss. I actually got put back in after that but I got blocked within 10 seconds of stepping onto the court and I'm not gonna lie I didn't belong out there when it mattered the most. Nate Oates literally took a timeout just to pull me and that might have been the smartest decision he's ever made as a coach. Mark Sears did what he did best as he now had the ball in his hands most of the time but this missed wide open three could end up being very costly as with time winding down Illinois had a chance to tie it but they couldn't do so and we were moving on to the Elite Eight which would be against UCLA who beat one seeded Kansas. We had made it so far in the tournament and I couldn't imagine losing now, but I also knew this one could be tough. I really didn't expect to be put in here, but starting guard Jaden Bradley had landed awkwardly on the previous play, so there I was making wild shots in the Elite Eight and trying my hardest to force some turnovers. Offensively, it had been a rough game so far as nobody's shot on the team was falling, and on the other side of the ball, UCLA was hitting everything, so I decided I should try and step up and I surprisingly nailed this one, but on the next position, possession, not only would I get rejected, but just a few seconds later, I'd get wide open and miss the three, and if I wouldn't have forced the steal and scored in the final seconds of the half, I definitely wouldn't have gotten to stay in the game, but it's a good thing that I did, because I was working with Mark Sears to finally take a lead on the Bruins. Even though I did give up a lot of points I shouldn't have, I made up for it on the other end, draining my three-point attempts, and forcing my way to the basket as my tiny little body could slip right by everyone. UCLA also failed to hit all of their shots at the end of the game, so we moved on to the final four, and I wasn't expecting to play against Xavier with Jaden Bradley back, especially since they were an extremely good team, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to be out there. It wasn't looking good for us from the start, but Mark Sears continued to keep us in it like he always does with incredible shots, and then I got put in. I actually wasn't nervous as I immediately came in and got an assist, and then I crossed a guy up, stepped back, took the three, and missed. The fact that I made a guy fall doesn't even count now, but at least I drilled a deep shot the next chance I got, and a minute later I drove in for a tough layup that would put us up by two, but this had to be the unluckiest moment of the day. I made a huge effort to save this ball just for it to give Xavier a wide open three, and that would end up being the turning point of the entire game as Xavier just didn't seem to miss anything after that. With less than three minutes left, we were trailing by six, and nothing was dropping for us, so we needed to start scoring fast, and this time I was automatic. However, on the other side of the court, Xavier would go back up by five, and I tried to put the game in the hands of Mark Sears, but he just wasn't hitting today, so instead, I tried to shoot one myself, missed it badly, and quickly out of transition, Xavier would take that miss and turn it into a massive momentum swinger. I let Brandon Miller take the next three, which he fortunately hit, and then the Musketeers tried to score for no reason. They could have drained 30 seconds off of the clock, but instead, they let Brandon Miller make it a one-point game, so now, we needed a stop 
stop, and unfortunately, I was too short to contest this shot. We were only down three, though, which meant it wasn't over, but Brandon Miller couldn't go for three in a row, so we had to pray that Colby Jones missed his free throws, and unfortunately, that wasn't the case. It seemed like it was all over, that we had failed, but I sent up one last prayer and hit it, so we just needed one free throw miss, and we got it. The entire season came down to this, and I wanted the ball in my hands. If I failed, it was on me, nobody else, and with the clock running out, I hoisted up a three for the win, but it was wide right, so I wasn't able to get my team to the national championship where Iowa beat Xavier by 30, but I had tried my best to play college basketball, and you all need to let me know in the comments if you want more videos on March Madness Legacy.